There are seven reasons that you get sexier when you cook for someone else. It's what we'll talk about today on the Carefree Cook's Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cook's Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cook's Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cook's Code, everyone. It's Chef Todd. We'll get the microphone out of the way. Uh, we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, as you know. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, you can go to webcookingclasses.com slash live uh, to get an email rewind reminder. If you already got an email reminder, do nothing. Don't sign up twice. It confuses things. If you didn't, go to webcookingclasses.com slash live to get the email that goes out every Tuesday morning so you know what the topic is and where to go and where to meet up with all your other carefree cook friends because we're creating our own recipes. We're bringing friends and family together around our cooking. We learn every time we cook. It's a forward progressive idea, not a endless cyclical recipe idea. Oh, that's a subsection of that one. Uh, you create your own cooking style when you cook this way. You practice pro methods and you wind up loving your cooking and that's how you become a carefree cook. And you know, um, we're gonna have fun today. I'm really excited because it's another great cooking time of the year. Actually, it's the sexiest time of the year for cooking and it's only about two weeks away. So we gotta start working on this. You know, of all things that you can use cooking for, your health and social ability and saving money. Well, you know, come sexy time of the year, that's the time to really uh, show off your cooking skills because you've survived all the holiday dinners, right? The massive amounts of people. You survived the New Year buffet and all the holiday potluck dinner. You even survived the Super Bowl and the dips and the wings. Well, now it's time to get a little more intimate with your food. Well, not intimate with your food, but uh, you know what I meant. Look, holiday dinners, right? They're for the whole family, tons of people. New Year's is a loud celebration. Super Bowl is mostly hype, but Valentine's Day is where you can really show off how much sexier you are when you're cooking for just two people. Before we get to that, I've got a what am I for you. Here it is. It's, uh, let's see, what's that say? Harvest the pods, crack them open, ferment, dry, roast, grind, conch, and temper. Uh, there's nine steps in, in doing, so, eight steps in doing something. Tell me in the comments section below uh, what this item is. It's the what am I for today and the steps that you take for that item. Tell me in the comments section below. I love it. I love hearing from you all the time. I try and be as active as possible in our uh, Facebook community, in the Carefree Cooks community, in the homework section, the resource section of web cooking classes. You know I'm always here to answer your questions and help you out. And in return, I seem to get a whole bunch of really generous, <laughs> really kind emails every week. I get dozens of them. It's incredible. And you know, I really appreciate it when you take the time to tell me how my unique approach to teaching cooking has helped you improve your lifestyle or your health. And people write to me all the time. I get things like Chef Todd, you know, our family eats together more often now. I find when, when you like to cook at home and you cook dinner and you have a dinner time, Time, we get back to that time where the family did gather around the table. Just right before, um, actually, I came here, uh, there was a comment uh, as well, something I had never done before, something I'm trying to do right now. It's so amazing. I get like Chef Todd after 40 years together or 30 or 50 years together, I'm cooking for my wife 
for the first time. I love that. I love when the man that didn't cook takes it up or not to be chauvinistic, the woman that didn't cook as she worked. Either way, you're sharing a hobby together. Uh, lately, I've been getting a lot of Chef Todd. I'm passing these skills on to my grandkids. And if you saw the Carefree Cooks Code last week, you'll know how important it is to pass these skills on to your grandkids. And then one time I got, Chef Todd, your cooking classes got me laid. Now, <laughs> Now, <laughs> these, you know, maybe all these are true statements. I mean, they are actual continents that I've gotten. And while web cooking classes can bring your family together, give you a new hobby, help educate and empower the next generation, I do not make any guarantees about getting lucky because of web cooking classes. That was one comment I got. But, you know, I know that cooking can make you a little sexier. How about that? Think about it. Cooking, romance. Cooking and love go together perfectly. Food is love. Love is food, right, in so many families. And the person that prepares the love is always worthy of our appreciation, right? D don't you just love someone who can cook? You do. Yes, you do. Tell me yes in the comment box. There's somebody that you can think of right now that was a great cook and you loved them because of it. Not in spite of it. <laughs> it, was, it was the bad cooks that you loved in spite of their bad cooking. The good cooks, you say yes, and I know the answer is yes, because I've heard the cooking stories of hundreds, thousands of home cooks all over the world. They love their mom. They love their grandma. They love anyone that brought them into the kitchen. They love the family meals. They love the celebrations. They remember the comfort food that was given to them in a cold winter or when they're sick. Are you like me when you get sick, you get a taste in your mouth? Whether you're eating that item that made you feel better or not, your brain gives you that taste. Your mom, your grandma, these people, they showed their love with the food. Mom taught you the feeling of security that food brings. Everybody loves their grandmas. <laughs> they brought them into the kitchen. They made them feel smart, right? Cooking makes you feel smart too. When the cookies come out just right, oh my God, the sense of pride, the sense of accomplishment. And I told you for me, it was my grandpa. It was my mother's father who made cooking seem just like a really cool puzzle, you know, to figure out, not a problem. And grandpa taught me problem solving skills. And again, in early development, this is important. Cooking is love. But let me shift here from what we already talked about last week in adulthood, cooking is love. And that's why we all love someone who can cook. And with Valentine's Day quickly approaching, it's the perfect opportunity to demonstrate your love through great food and cooking. And there are seven very specific things that you demonstrate when you cook for someone else. It's obvious. You don't have to write poetry. You don't have to send cards when you cook for someone else because it immediately demonstrates these things. And each of these characteristics is something that raises your status in the eyes of someone that you love. And because you cook for someone else, it shows that you're sensitive. Someone who cooks is sensitive to colors, is sensitive to flavors and textures. It's art, right? You're sensitive enough to know the right favorite foods to use of your loved one. You're sensitive enough to cook for a specific diet, demonstrating that you're sensitive to the things that are important to them. You can demonstrate that through cooking. I know you. I know your likes and dislikes. I know your needs and wants. I don't have to say it. I cook it. Sexy. <laughs> cooking is sexy because it shows that you're creative as well. And people are attracted to those that can express themselves through art, through music, through literature, or in the kitchen. You always hear a rock star say that they picked up the guitar because they knew that was the way to get girls, <laughs> right? I don't know that I hear chefs say that very often, but it worked out okay for me. Although I think Heather turned me into a chef after I... Anyway, look, if you can't play the guitar, <laughs> if you can't write poetry, poetry, but you can put exciting flavors and interesting foods together to show your creativity, then you do have an artistic streak. Then that's something you can demonstrate to the person that you love through your cooking. You know, another thing is success is really sexy. 
People are attracted to successful people and the success of your cooking skills shows that you can bring a project or a presentation to fruition. You can see the job through to the end. <laughs> you get me? It's really attractive to have somebody plan a menu for you, coordinate the whole thing, coordinate the timing, execute it perfectly, present a beautiful plate that you then enjoy together. You're a huge success. And you know, another thing I find being well-traveled or being worldly is really sexy. You, do, do you know people that have been to exotic places? They're really interesting. You want to know more about it. And even if you've never gotten on a plane, <laughs> even, even if you've never gone anywhere in your life, you can travel through food and cooking. It's one of the most fun parts of it. You can gather ingredients from all over the world. You can speak articulately about why you chose these ingredients to put these meals together. You start bringing cultures together. You start combining and contrasting styles and flavors. You start making your dining room a travel destination, even if you've never gone anywhere in your life. It's one of the sexiest things about cooking. Another thing is generosity. You know, cooking and generosity go hand in hand. Again, giving, giving of love, empowering people with the skills. And when I talk about generosity, I'm not talking about picking up the check at, at a Valentine's Day dinner, right? 150, 200 bucks. It seems every time I go out on a special night, it gets more and more expensive. An expensive meal used to be 100 bucks. An expensive meal now is getting close to two and more at some of these restaurants. That's not generosity, just picking up the checks. I'm, I'm not talking about dollars and cents generosity. I mean the generosity of your time. I mean the generosity of your attention toward this person that you love because when you give your time to someone else, it's really generous. Anybody can pick up a check. You know, but to make the dinner, to do it together, then you've really given something that can jumpstart a relationship. And there's always a little mystery to it, no? And mysteriousness is sexy, don't you think? Someone that's figuring out how cooking works. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it a little mysterious? I hear from a lot of you all the time. <laughs> you repeat, Chef Todd says. I tell my friends, well, Chef Todd says. And I hear my child repeat to their friend, Chef Todd says. Well, you know something. You know, through web cooking classes, through our Carefree Cooks community, you know something that a lot of people don't know. And that's mysterious. That's really cool when you talk about the food or you talk about the cooking methods. And they wonder, they, they think to themselves, how did they know that? How did they know how to make this? How did they know that those flavors go together? Oh, they're so mysterious, right? How did they get these ideas? And now, what other talents are hiding below? You, you create curiosity about yourself when you create mystery. And mystery is a skill that can be really sexy and you can achieve it through cooking. And lastly, a little bit more obvious, when you cook for someone else, you can show off that you're really good with your hands. You, <laughs> you are skilled being good with your hands, getting flashy with a pastry bag, flambéing the saute pan, you know, seeing the flame come up. It's flashy. It's sexy. It's cool. You can do something that a lot of other people can't. And when you cook together in the kitchen, even if only one of you is in charge of like pouring the wine, <laughs> if you cook together and one of you is in charge of keeping the wine glasses full, that's fine. The other one can go ahead and show off those knife skills, right? Cut things into nice flower shapes, into consistent cuts, deglaze the pan, flambe that flan, because each kitchen skill that you show off might just make them wonder what else you can accomplish with your hands. A man that can cook instantly demonstrates sentiments that a lot of men simply can't put into words. Men, men, they're not, sometimes they're not good with words. You know, they're not good with poetic sentences, but I find that men are good 
with cooking. Men are good with creative, artistic cooking because specifically men, men don't like following recipes. When have you ever known a man that wants to stop and ask for directions, right? And that's what the recipes are. So men are great at this and a romantic meal together will mean so much more to women then, then all the flowers, all the chocolates, the greeting cards that you just stop off on your way home from work, all those things you can gather them up. It, it just, cooking says so much more to them because of the things that I've mentioned. Now, women, let's not be chauvinistic. Let's admit, no matter how old the boy gets, he, he still has those feelings and, and elements of comfort from when he was a boy and food brings this out in people. Women that cook for the loved ones that they have, they demonstrate the kindness and generosity that I described. Women can be the leaders, the providers, and the artists in the kitchen with these cooking skills that, that create so much warmth and so much love in the household. And that's why a, ro whoa, that's a lot of love. Wait a minute, that's why that's why a romantic meal together will mean more <laughs> will mean more to you, more to a man than all the neckties and cologne or garage tools that you can give him. It just it says so much more about you whether you're a male or a female. All right, I got to stop that. <laughs> when you realize how sexy cooking for someone else makes you. It's my number one recommendation, as you might guess, for the upcoming Valentine's Day. But look, here's the thing. I, I can't tell you what romantic food is to you, right? It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be complicated either. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about, you know, doing really fancy, hard, difficult things. If your first date was at a baseball game, then maybe hot dogs, you know, and popcorn is a romantic meal. It is not just that the food communicates it. It's that you know the person so well. You know what's romantic to them. And just like a great restaurant, it's the mood that you create, the environment, the atmosphere that comes along with your home-cooked meal on Valentine's Day. That's what I'm trying to bring to you today. So let, let's uh, take a look into our Carefree Cooks community and see if there's any sexy cooking going on <laughs> there yet or if it's too early. Oh, this first one. I thought this was pretty sexy. Shanice. Shanice says she made a delish, D-E-L-I-S-H, delish dinner uh, tonight. Linguini with shrimp, broccoli, a spicy red pepper puree, and a tequila Lime sauce. She had me a tequila lime sauce. I like that. Love to know how she did it. Uh, topped with just a small grating of Parmesan cheese and fresh bar parsley. This is pretty sexy, Shanice. I like that. Nicely done. Uh, Van. Van just whipped up these brown butter and banana cake, cupcakes and cake. So brown butter and banana cake and cupcake. That's what it was. Uh, used brown butter buttercream for the frosting. That's a, a limerick. <laughs> that's, a, that's a love poem in itself. Brown butter buttercream uh, looks pretty sexy to me. Jody, Jody's brand new with us. She's hit the ground running. She was really unconfident about this omelet, but she made a Japanese omelet anyway. She told me all about it step by step, which is a good thing because when you can close your eyes and imagine like how you made it, the steps you went through and so on, then you're more likely to be able to duplicate it. You can do it blindfolded if you close your eyes and remember it. Anyway, Jody's Japanese omelet, a rolled omelet, cool thing, right? Uh, spinach, radish, red onion, dill flavored Havarti cheese, really cool omelet. What a great idea, you know? Forget about Valentine's Day necessarily having to be dinner. How about a Valentine's Day breakfast or brunch for the one that you love? Uh, you know, we did cooking goals a few weeks ago and John has made baking part of his 2020 cooking goals. He took to heart what we talked about a few weeks ago. And he says that, you know, he's made some cakes from mixes from a box before, but this is his very first attempt at a totally scratch cake. Really? <laughs> that That's your first attempt? Well, I would say if this is your first attempt at a totally scratch cake, 
everyone from now on is going to be pretty good, John. You, you, you do not need to be nervous anymore. You have the confidence. I, I can't wait to see what the second one is going to look like. I mean, really, right on, John, because of the methods and the confidence that you have. Just go forward. Just do it. It's cool. Give that to someone. It's pretty sexy. Uh, Mandy made chili mussels. Somebody else is like, I never cooked this thing before. Mandy says, I never made mussels before, but something I was always interested in. I have the methods for making something else. Make sounds kind of like mussels. Put the two and two together. First time she made it, absolutely perfect. Love the results. That is a sexy looking dish. No? Mollusks? Anybody else? No? I think mollusks are sexy. Well, they might, mussels might not be as sexy as scallops. I'll give you that. Clams, let's let's rank them in sexiness. Clams, mussels, scallops. Well, it's gotta be scallops on top for sure. Scallops are the sexiest mollusk of all. Plus, the scallop shell is the symbol of fertility. You've seen this before. There, there's a, a famous uh, uh, work of art uh, that is, uh, they call it Venus on the half shell. It, it, it all has to do with St. James the Elder, uh, where uh, uh, Christians went on a pilgrimage, food was portioned in the uh, scallop shell. The scallop shell is a symbol of fertility. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm down such a side road. It, it's a whole story that I talk about on my Romancing the Kitchen online course and DVD, but I'm not talk, telling you about that. I'll tell you more about that just a, a little bit later. But first, time, first, it's time to wrap up today's What Am I? What am I? What did you get? Pardon me, what did you guess? These eight steps. Well, since the topic today is sexy food and cooking this week, it may not surprise you to know that these are all steps in making chocolate. That's right. Uh, the line that should have given it away is conching to me, or tempering for that matter. Uh, these are the steps that chocolate goes through from the tree to your chocolate bar, <laughs> uh, if you will. And the, the thing about conching, that's the word. It's such a, a unique word for chocolate. Conching, conch, comes from a Spanish word, actually, called concha. And concha is shell. This again goes back a little bit more food history. Uh, the, the shell was the original portioning device for chocolate or the original conching device. So the, the process became known as conching because it was always done in a shell. Now, <laughs> modern conching is not done in a shell, no. Conching, so I can define it, it's the gentle scraping and agitating that changes the chemical structure and the texture of chocolate. It changes chocolate from like a very grainy, powdery substance to creating an emulsification with the fat that's in there. It turns it into a like pourable, fatty substance instead of a powdery one. That is another class we could talk about <laughs> chocolate entirely. I am running off the rails today and we got to wind it up soon. So if you know someone uh, that would like to put a little bit more sexy into their cooking, please like or share this video with them. I mean, who doesn't want to get sexier, right? <laughs> share it with them and they'll appreciate it. And hey, let me ask you this. Do you think aphrodisiac foods really exist? Are there specific foods that really can turn you on? Is it a myth? Is it reality? Well, if it's true, I would definitely want to know what these foods are and how I can put them into my cooking for Valentine's Day right away. And you're going to find all the answers in my latest free online web class. It's Romancing the Kitchen, the foods and techniques to create a romantic restaurant in your home. Find a class date that's right for you at webcookingclasses.com slash vday webcookingclasses.com slash vday. Hey, until next Tuesday at noon Eastern time, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your romantic cooking success. See you then, everyone. Bye-bye.